Greetings this morning. My name is Donnie Huslidge, and this is Apostolic Lighthouse Church. And this is the pastor's morning update. Today we're going to continue a little bit in the forever prayer, but I found some things to just kind of spice that up. Uh, we'll end with the forever prayer. would like to remind us uh, that um, Saturday at 1 p.m. we're having a memorial for Cecily Pies at 1 p.m., and then uh, we're also praying for quite a few people. We're praying for uh, Sister Snow. She's uh, in a rehab right now, trying to help her recover her ability to walk. So we're, we're praying with that. And there is many others. Just keep your eyes open. There's always things to pray about. People who called yesterday asked us to pray. We want to let them know we are praying for you. Um, we're also intervening for all of the... Every, every time you make a step forward, there seems to be maybe two steps back or uh two steps forward one step back you hope it's that way because you're only losing one step and you're still making a step you don't want one step forward two step back that is not what you're looking for because with that you are definitely losing ground well let me tell you the church is not losing ground completely you know we are losing some ground but why do i say that well because we haven't evangelized the world yet uh, the dominant thing in, in the culture is anarchy and humanism. It is not Christianity. It is not a love of God. Uh, the problem is the Christians don't manifest it enough, make it visible enough. And then the, the world loves sin. They love sin. Uh, um, I mean, we love sin. Human nature loves sin. And an embracing of God requires some things it's going to be doing without and you, you see all this stuff and you're being asked to do without, then before you know it, you, you uh, I mean, you give in to sin. It's a horrible, complicated thing. You say, why did God put us here? Because this is what we're made for. You know, it's almost like the pencil asking, why am I a pencil? Uh, you are good and made for some things. Uh, you're not made to be a, a jet plane. You're a pencil. Now, uh, you might argue with that and that we're a free will agent and we can do whatever we want to do. No, here's what happens with people when they're loose to do whatever they want to do. And it becomes anarchy and they kill each other. It's kind of incredible. And you see it in today's society. Uh, we live in a corrupt society. Uh, what brought us to Christianity? The knowledge that there is a supreme being and that there is a master plan and God is in control even when we don't understand it. And you think, oh, that's just... That's just foolishness. You ought to seek to study that. No, some things are by faith. You know, I, I, don't, I don't understand why certain things happen. But I don't get myself all combobulated trying to think I understand everything. I recognize as you get older, your memory goes. You eventually maybe get dementia or you lose some of your faculty. That is life, the process of life. And the quicker you embrace wisdom. You know, the word wisdom really means patterns for life. That's what it means. Patterns for life. How direction to choose. Choosing wisdom literally means choosing God's way, choosing God's path, the things that you've seen that God has shown. And if you'll listen, God will give you a path. Now, we are we are a little anarchist unto ourselves. You know, uh, anarchy means no one's going to tell me what to do. I'm going to rule myself. We have that tendency to have that spirit. Uh, we don't want a preacher to tell us what to do. We don't want a boss to tell us what to do. Well, I mean, the problem is the preacher and the boss have to tell you what to do because you're not telling yourself what to do. Think about it. You're just being uh, a log on the water floating down. That works for a little bit, maybe tens uh, to your 20s and 30s. But, buddy, once you get in your 40s, you better have some kind of trajectory and you better have some kind of target path. Because if you don't, you're going to be a shipwreck. You're going to be a mess. Your family's going to be a mess. There won't be any history left. You'll be nothing but a sucker. A sucker. Somebody who just sucks. <laughs> you know, and I, what do I mean by that? Uh, we used to talk to our kids that all the fish with lips suck off the bottom. And that's what they are. They're just bottom suckers. And, uh, you know, I even told my kids that. You might think, oh, this is cruel. But whenever I say sucker fish, my kids know exactly what I'm talking about. It's somebody who gets a freeloader. He doesn't want to uh, build his own nest. He wants to suck off somebody else's nest. And I don't necessarily mean that in family, but sometimes it does apply, doesn't it? 
Uh, nobody here is righteous, but there is a set of pattern in the scripture that is clearly defined. Everybody will try to tell you, well, there's no rule. And so because there's no rule, my rule is important. My rule is right. No, no, there is rules. And those rules are the word of God. And that's why we always tell everybody, get into the word of God, because there are rules there and they will govern and direct. You know, children are not supposed to be disrespectful to their parents. I don't care what age it is, you know, uh, the, you need to, and parents need to raise their children up right with right character and right direction and not overbearing with them, but, but raise them up. And there's times there's rebels. I'm thankful. I, I don't have, I don't have any rebels in my family in Jesus name. And I still pray that way because I know overnight, I mean, even as good as Job's family was, he lost all of his children. Think about that. But the interesting thing is that father, Job, made sacrifices for his kids in case they sinned. Now, am I telling you to go figure a way to make sacrifices? Not necessarily, but I hope that my living for God has a good effect on my kids. So I guess I'm doing the same thing, making some kind of, absolutely, I hope that I live correctly. And because of that, those people I love will receive a blessing, uh, even if they're wrong. Well, yeah, probably be honest with you. Probably. I don't want to be a liar about that, but I, I don't mind if the blessing that I've, I've pursued God with extends to at least the next generation and the next generation. So I have something in common with Job, <laughs> you know, that I pray for my kids and I, I, you know, whether I make sacrifices uh, like a animal. No, I don't do that. But I do say, Lord, keep them, watch them, protect them, cover them. Well, why? Yeah, because I want to live for God. And I don't want the next generation to live for God. I'm not going to sit here and get caught up with this insanity that's out in the world today. Well, I, I, I read an article yesterday and it was pretty profound and I, I haven't got it all out of it, but there's a couple of, of, of sentences here I want to read to you. Maybe a paragraph. It's called The Other Side of Spiritual. You'll find it on the World Network of Prayer website, and it's by Colleen uh, Klabau. Klabau? Something along those lines, but her first name is Colleen. I can read that one, right? But it says, The Other Side of Spiritual Warfare. Now, it gets into a whole bunch of things about how you get burnout as a prayer warrior, and it's amazing, amazing that somebody talks about that. You get burnout as a prayer warrior. Whoa! Oh, man, <laughs> she knows it. I mean, when she taps into that right in the middle of this whole article, it's like, whoa, what a visionary, what understanding. Because when you fight this battle, when you're fighting against the enemy and you're trying to lay new ground and, you know, plow new stove, track a new path, all of those type of things you're trying to do. What am I talking about? I'm talking about leading a godly life in this evil world is a battle. Yes, it's a battle. It's a warfare. It's an encounter. It's an aggressive encounter. People will turn on you. People will. Uh, and people are the worst thing. The scripture has to remind us we're not fighting it against flesh and blood, but against principalities, spirits that are in high places. There's a spiritual evil in the world. I don't know how this thing took a turn. COVID looked like just something. And then all of a sudden at this point, it looks like some evil has risen to the surface. It's been condensed and risen to the surface and it's in our face. And maybe the Lord allowed some of this to happen just so that we might see that other things are evil, evil. The Other Side of Spiritual Warfare by Colleen Klebau. Um Federal agents don't learn to spot counterfeit money by studying the counterfeits. They study uh, genuine bills until they master the look of the real thing. Then they see the bogus money. They recognize it as it goes by. They recognize the original. And when something's out of whack, they say, this is out of whack. It's very quick detection. That quote is from John MacArthur. I've read it before and others have, have either quoted him or said it also. The idea is this, is that when something is wrong, you would feel that it is wrong. You would see immediately with, without even thinking, without even uh, having an idea about it. If you are one who falls into evil quickly, uh, I, I one time dealt with some folks 
and they had done evil so long. There was and now they called themselves Christians. Don't get me wrong here, but all of their operation was flippant and and not Bible based. It's kind of scary what we do today. We don't endeavor to get deeper in the Word and become more sound in the Word. We just allow it to kind of uh, I don't know. Uh, the devil has figured out that special string when I go out to. Uh, to feed the chickens for my wife uh, loves chicken so we're gonna get chicken bags of feed and if you figure out how to take apart the top of the feed bag feed bags are very well made but they're sewn in a specific way that out of the three or four strings that they have at the end there is one string that if you pull it the whole thing comes unraveled and it's there for a reason so that it kind of unties the top so that you can actually dump the bag the devil has figured out that pull string, that that link pin that pulls it all apart. And he does that to so many people. And he keeps them in this subcategory of, of weakness or stumbling or brokenness. I'm going to tell those that are there, bust out of there. Get determined. Put your face to the plow. Get into prayer. Start praying and fasting and seeking the face of God. And you will find the power of God to be victorious. That's what it works. <coughs> Excuse me, I do it every time. Every time I get into a place where I'm floundering, the word floundering is, you know, you just can't go or fishing or, you know, flopping all over the place. You really don't have any direction. I get into prayer. I get into that place with God and start pursuing God. Amen. You know, I'm uh, just wound up. Last night we had a prayer meeting here, uh, 630 on, on Zoom. And boy, you could feel the power of the Holy Ghost. You could feel the presence of God. We were doing a battle. We were talking to everybody about uh, throwing sand in the enemy's war machine, putting sand in the gears where the grease is at and the metal comes together, throwing sand in that. And we were doing it while we were praying. You might think that's just a fantasy. Well, I've seen prayer work and I have great confidence in prayer. I know prayer works. You might not be able to detect it with a camera or a microscope, but I have seen it work. Seen it work. Very many times I know God has responded directly to my prayer. And right now I feel the shakeup and the evil coming forward in the world today has to do with the prayers of the saints is that God is intervening. We are at the edge of a third great awakening. This is a moment right before God shows his handiwork. Matter of fact, we don't actually see it. We see the effects of it. That's what happens in a great awakening. We start seeing the effects of changed people. We have more people wanting to be at church, people feeling a, needing to get back into the presence of God. We need to be there to meet that need, to answer that cry of the human heart. The ever-increasing push of evil into our societies, this is the article, has caused alarm in the church world. And rightly so, every day we're fighting and warring in the spirit and we constantly hear the prophecies and the warnings where this evil will take us. This has caused a large number of believers to come together to pray, prayer meetings, even non-believers, conferences and movements in ever to, ever to fight against the evil conquest. Prayer makes a difference and without prayer our nation will fail. We bind the evil and loose the good. We, we weep, we would travail, we war. And this says, we wear out. I'll read the rest of this sometime. There's a group of scriptures at the bottom that is incredible also that I will hopefully be sharing with you. But what we do is today the media spins. They, they spin everything. I mean, you've got to be extremely cautious. Try to read between the lines. Throw out 90% and keep only 10% of what the media says. Anarchy is God. Uh, you know, full craziness is is the God uh, of, of, of what's going there. Or anarchy is not just God, but it's also pronounced to you as good. It's scary somehow uh, because Trump is bad. You know, anarchy is good because Trump is bad. Uh, Trump has to be bad. The other day we were listening to uh, NPR, I just put on NPR, and I can listen to it longer than my wife can. By the time it's on for three or four minutes, my wife is saying, turn that off. I don't understand how we can fund a radio station that does nothing but uh, put down our president. It just drives me crazy. Um, that I mean, when, when God lifts up um, a banner, everything, I've never, ever, ever, ever seen 
anybody attack somebody the way they attack Trump. Why? Because Trump is the answer. It is the answer. And you can tune me out right now if you like, but it appears to me right in the middle of Joseph. I mean, Joseph during the Bible time would have been the best guy to kill, right? You go and you kill Joseph. And if you kill Joseph, you kill all of the nations. See, God uses leaders to bless nations and he uses leaders to curse nations. And right now, uh, you know, there we have a lifeline. Somebody has fixed something. I mean, can you look at the, what's going on in the in the politics and see, has that improved our society at all? My goodness, um, you know, um, Mr. Floyd was murdered. I grant you that. But it was a liberal police off. It was a Democratic police group in a Democratic city. I mean, I don't know how all that became Trump's fault. I can't, the media, I, I, I don't know what to do because that's all they say. And then, and then human thought has eroded to no thought. Uh, we find that all over the place today. Human thought has become no thought whatsoever. I mean, it's insanity. People aren't thinking. It's almost like I uh, burned myself in this fire yesterday. I'm going to put my hand in again today and burn myself again. No, it doesn't hurt. No, it's not taking off flesh. No, it's not destroying me. No, it's not charring me. What, what has happened? What has happened to us? We have chosen evil over good. What has happened? We need to pray that this tower of Babel is torn down. This tower that is anti-God, that is working so hard to work against the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The church needs to raise up and get into that place of prayer and say, Lord, cut this off at its ankles. Hallelujah. You might think we need to get out there and burn some things down. I don't recommend that. I recommend that you go into a place of prayer. The scripture alludes not to a physical warfare, but to a spiritual warfare. The thing we don't believe in, we don't believe there's monsters in spiritual places. Yes, there are. There are monsters out there. Churchill said about Hitler, if you feed the crocodile enough, maybe he will eat you last. And that's the truth. If you sit by on the, on the stage and you just go do absolutely nothing and, oh, we'll just appease this thing, it'll go away, then you might be very well incorrect. Let me read that to you. Churchill said, if you feed the croc enough, maybe he will eat you last. I'm talking about Hitler. My, this evil intention is not going to just be wiped off and brushed away. Uh, we, we have a great mind for evil, and the spirit of the Antichrist is extremely active. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening to my passion this morning. And it's getting into a, excuse me, a place of prayer, taking down the enemy's war machine. And my second part is the next uh, four components of the forever prayer. Lord, teach me how to disciple my nation. Now, this is on your Facebook. Go down a few pages. It's a link I put in yesterday. Not a link, but I put the whole thing in there. And this is uh, point number six, seven, eight, and nine. But Lord, teach me how to disciple the, my nation. In other words, teach me how to go out there and be an influence. And it might be through money. It might through be uh, marching on a corner. I've marched in abortion uh, activist things, pro-life things. Um, I, and there are some of the things that I would probably be willing to march in just to make, make my word known. It seems in media, that seems to be the only thing that, that means anything to them. But I'm not trying to impress the media. I'm trying to grab the individual mind. Uh, Francis Schaeffer say this all the time. It says, you are what you think. You are the way you think. You become what you think. And I think I'm so tired of Christians thinking like dingbats and not thinking outside of the box and not feeling like they're supposed to be influential in anything. I, I don't know. I, I'd rather be a log going down the river than a little tiny speck or something that's going to be eaten by a critter. I mean, my goodness, if you grab a hold of God, you're much bigger immediately. I hope that makes sense. Lord, teach me how to disciple my nation. I desire greater wisdom and revelation to strategically win my neighbors, my leaders, and my culture to the good news. I, when I first read this, probably eight years ago, that single part 
it was just profound because it forced me to start asking God to increase my wisdom and revelation and give me a strategy, a strategy to win my neighbors. Give me a plan that goes over time that's going to win my neighbors. This is some serious praying. And then the next one is, I want to see your special prayer come to pass. What special prayer? Well, it's a special prayer. Come on. The, the Lord's Prayer, the, the Our Father, that is a special prayer. But we skip over the first part because, I mean, the first part we got, Our Father which is in heaven, he's exalted. Hallowed be thy name. We got that. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. What? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. What do you mean? How is God's will going to be done on earth without you waking up in the morning and knowing you have a part to play? You are God's will on earth. So what are, you, what are you doing? You look around and say, oh, I'm not doing nothing. Then you are nothing. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm here to encourage people, but I'm not here to placate people and play along with their, their weirdness and their crazy thinking and just say, oh, that's okay. That's okay. You play with fire. You go right ahead. That's okay. You just do what you want to do. You can, you can, you, you can be whatever kind of sexual orientation you want. I can't placate that. God, did, don't let me placate that. I try to be nice and friendly, but foolishness and utter ignorance is still foolishness and utter ignorance. God, give me a voice to see that. Amen. I want to see your special prayer come to pass. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Next part. Lord, I ask for dreams and visions that would spark holy passion in me. I am grateful that you share so much with me, for you have called me friend instead of servant. Wow. The scripture says that he reveals, before he does any things, he reveals it to his prophets. The other day I was talking with... Uh, one of our ministers, and he was saying, I just have started praying for God to open my eyes of vision and take me to places in my prayer that I have never been before, that I wouldn't go on my own. And that's so true. God, give me dreams and visions that would spark a holy passion in me. So I, I'm grateful that you share so much with them. I love that. I am grateful. I'm grateful that God shares his word with me, his truth, his whisper in my ear, his, his the, the people that are around me that say great and godly things. I'm so thankful for that. And then for you have called me friend instead of servant. Friend instead of servant. In closing, I will I will read this to the point where we're at now. And it goes like this, my forever prayer. Lord, what area of society have you called me to influence? I yield my heart and my mind to you as you impart your heart and vision to me. What an honorable thing. Lord, break my heart for what breaks yours. Show me the opportunities that I have before me that I have not yet noticed. Give me strength and courage to step out in risk to minister to those around me. Lord, teach me how to disciple my nation. I desire greater wisdom and revelation to strategically win my neighbors, my leaders, my culture to the good news. I want to see your special prayer come to pass. May your kingdom be on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I ask for dreams and visions that would spark holy passion in me. I am grateful that you share so much with me, for you have called me friend instead of servant. Thank you, Jesus. God bless ALC. We'll see everybody tonight because it's Wednesday night. We'll see you at 7 p.m. We'll have a great message right here on Facebook. Our plan at this point is to consider coming back to church in August. We're hoping our numbers decrease and people are more safe. We still have a divided faction of those that feel very afraid of COVID and those that aren't afraid at all. So I'm trying to figure a way to blend that so people can be somewhat comfortable. The greatest suggestion we have now is that everybody keeps a mask on until they seat themselves. And at that time, they can take their mask off and us have church. So I look forward to that. That'll be August 2nd, not very many days away, 15 days away. This is nothing compared to the rest of the COVID. 
So I just, I pray that you keep intact. I can't do it. I can't wave a magic wand and make you be fixed. But you can get before God. You can pursue God. This is like being out in the wilderness. This is what it is. This is the persecution and the pressure that some people feel all the time. And they don't buckle under. And Frank, a great, a great story. Didn't buckle under. I've been too long-winded today. I love you dearly. God bless you. Be faithful. Love God. Pursue him with everything you have. And we'll see you tonight. God bless you.